Hello everyone, welcome back to Altium Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson. Today, we're gonna be looking at how to make your schematic sheets look super professional like I've shown in some of the one minute design reviews. Now, I received a great comment on one of the older design review videos and this design review was submitted by Sohail Shabafruz. And you may remember his very professional looking set of schematics for his ESP32 IoT product. We're gonna look at how to create super professional schematics just like this inside of Altium, so make sure you hop into your copy of Altium and follow along. Let's get started. Now in this video, we're going to look at how to use the drawing tools as well as other features inside Altium to create extremely professional looking schematics. Now this video was inspired by a comment on one of our older design review videos and this design came from Sohail Shabafruz. This comment from Unicode String writes, how did he make such a detailed documents in AD? Is there any tutorial for doing this? We have some other great comments on this video. Bawia writes, Awesome work. Sane 8827 writes, that was so beautiful. Mr. Tucker's 2848 writes, that's so clean and not chicken scratch as how some engineers show their work. Well, I agree with all those comments. They are very nice schematics. And I've gone ahead and pulled up the original schematic document here on screen, which was sent in to me by Sohail Shabafruz. So here we can see some of the features that folks are referencing in those comments. Here we have a very nice, very detailed cover page. We have some notes here. We have a table of contents. We don't see that very often in some of the design review submissions. And we have some images of the final layout. Here as we scroll through, we have a very beautifully drawn block diagram. And then we eventually get into the actual circuitry that was created for this PCB design. Now, one thing that's really nice about this circuitry is that it's not just using the default color scheme. And I will admit, I am very guilty of often just using the default color scheme. And that's okay, there's nothing wrong with it. But you can tell that the folks that created these schematics really put some time into making them look unique. As we scroll through here, you can see some other features such as very nice identifiers for the various circuits that appear in the design. And they even have a very clear, very nice looking title block with a company logo. And it's all of those little details that really matter if you wanna make your schematics look super professional. So now we've got an idea of what type of features we're looking to include in some of our schematics. Let's go ahead and hop into Altium and we'll see what tools are available in the schematic editor to create some of these features that you see in this PDF. Now here I have a blank schematic pulled up inside Altium's schematic editor and I want to start at the very foundation for a good schematic to make it look super professional and that is the title block. Now as you can see here in the default blank schematic you do have some entries for a title block but what I like to do is actually apply a template that includes parameters for my title block. So let me show you what I mean. If you go up here to design and sheet templates, you can then select from one of the built-in templates or you can select from your own template. Now I think it's a very good idea as any designer that wants to do this professionally to have your own sheet templates, especially if you're working as a freelance designer and you're gonna be delivering things for clients. So you can have your templates located locally or you can just load them from a file. Or as you can see here, I have templates that I have placed on my server because I'm using Altium 365. I can select, for example, NWES template. You'll see here, I can apply it to all the schematic sheets in the project or just one document. Here, I'm just gonna leave it as just this document because we only have this sheet. And then I always do replace all matching parameters just in case there are any parameters in the existing template that I wanna update. When I go ahead and click OK, you can see here that we have some information that automatically loads into the title block area. So here you can see we have a logo. You can see here that the logo is transparent. There is no white color in this logo. I've made that logo transparent intentionally. And then you can see here we have the company address. And then we have some parameters here that are embedded inside of the sheet template. Now, how do we get 
these parameters to populate with some information. Well, what we can do is we can go into the project options and here under the parameters tab, we can then create those parameters. So for example, under project title, I can then call this, let's say test pro schematics. I'm going to hit OK. And then when I hit OK on this dialog, you see here that test pro schematics just filled in here in the template. So you can do the same thing with doc number, rev number, and then the sheet numbers here inside the title block. So I think the title block is a really good foundation for creating a pro schematic and you can speed all of that up by creating your own sheet templates. So take a look at some of the other videos on the channel if you want to learn more about sheet templates and I'll probably do a sheet templates video in the future. Next thing I want to look at is a revision history. So in a revision history, this is often drawn in the upper right corner of the sheet. And it's typically going to look something like this, where we basically have like a revision number and a description or a revision number, and then the name of the person who uh, did the revision. So just as an example, we might have something really simple, just like this. And we can then copy all of these lines so that we create a set of entries here on the schematic sheet where we can enter revision information. Now, if you don't like the way these lines look just as default black, if you select all of this, you see here that there are some styling options inside of the properties panel. So for example, we can do dashed lines, we can do dotted lines, solid lines, we can even change the line color. For example, I can make them all blue, we can make these medium sized lines so they're a little bit thicker. Just some examples of what you can do with some of the drawing tools. Now, once we have our revision history information allocated here in the schematic, we can create some text. For example, this could be a rev number. And then this right here could be, for example, a description. And then we also have some styling options for these text entries. So you see here, I've selected both of these text entries. I can change the size of the text. I can change the color of the text. Maybe I want to uh, make it red, for example. I can make the text bold, all the standard styling that you would expect for text that you enter in to a schematic editor. Now this revision history doesn't have to be on this main cover sheet for your schematics, but it is helpful to include it in the overall set of schematics for your project. This way you have a clear history of what was changed in the design as you move between each revision. You can also document it in, for example, a Word document, but I still think it's a good idea to just put a short summary right there in the schematics. That way a reviewer like myself is going to know what has changed in the project over time. Now something else we can create here in these schematics is a table of contents. And you may remember from the schematics I showed earlier that there was a table of contents in that cover sheet. Table of contents is also very simple. We can just essentially create it as an area where we're going to enter in text information. And here we can then create our lines. We can apply some styling to them just like we had for the other lines. For example, we can make these medium, maybe turn these lines. Let's make these lines green just for fun. And then we can start adding in some text. So so generally with a table of contents, of course, we want to have a sheet number. We're starting with 00, zero as you can tell from the file name up here on the top of the sheet. Let's make this text a little bigger so it's a little easier to read. And then we're going to count down from 00, zero to 0, 01, zero 02, so on and so forth. And we'll just put each sheet into this list of schematic sheets. Then you want to make sure that you copy this over, put it here, and then you can enter in cover sheet, for example. And one thing to note, the title of a schematic sheet may not always be the same as the file name for the sheet that's stored on your computer. So for example, this one is named cover sheet, but maybe it's good to add a column here and to provide the file name for this schematic. And as you can see here in the projects panel, the actual name of this sheet is not cover sheet, but the file name is 00-cover dot SCHDOC. This is the file name for this sheet. So I think it's always a good idea to include that in the table of contents. And you can just go ahead and fill in all this information as you see fit. Now, another thing that we saw in the schematics from Sohail Shabafruz was an image. And just like I can embed a company logo down here in the schematic template, I can also embed an image inside this schematic document. So for example, I can just right click on the toolbar up here. And in this set of drawing tools, I can then select 
graphic. I can then click here. I'm gonna go over to the images for my website. I'm gonna pick one of these PCB graphics that you see here. So I'm gonna pick the graphic for our isolated dual ADC module, and we're gonna go ahead and open that up. And now you can see what it looks like. As I'm dragging my mouse, it's allowing me to set the size of the image that I want to appear inside of this schematic sheet. So here I'm just gonna make it that big, I'm gonna hit escape, and there you see we now have an image of the PCB layout embedded in our schematic. Now, one thing that's important to note about placing images inside of schematic doc files is that these images are being pulled from an image file on your computer when you place these images. Now, for example, if you delete that image or if you move that image, or maybe you take this schematic doc file and you give the schematic doc file to another person and they open it, you won't be able to see the image anymore. But that's okay, we can get around that by selecting this image and here inside the properties panel, you see there's an option to click embedded. If I just click embedded, it is going to embed that image inside of this schematic document and that way, when I open the schematic doc later on another computer where I don't have this image saved, I'll still be able to see the image because it's basically carried around inside of the schematic document. Now the next thing I want to look at is found on page two of the schematics that were sent in from Sohail Shabafru. So let's take a look at page two. Here you can see that page two is a block diagram for this system and there is quite a bit of detail in this block diagram. You can see here that we have specific part numbers that are on a couple of these blocks. We even have some named pins. We have power ports that are named, very nice. We also have some page numbers that are named here and we have some interfaces that are called out going between these blocks. We also have some interfaces called out going between different blocks and different features on certain pages. So again, pretty detailed here. Now you can use the drawing tools inside the schematic editor in Altium to draw a drawing just like this. And really the only limit to what you can do is based on the amount of time you want to spend drawing out your block diagram. Now, because of course this is a YouTube video, I'm not gonna show you how to do this in a huge amount of detail, but what I am going to do is I'm going to just create a new schematic. We'll go ahead and save this as 01 block diagram and add it to our project. And then we'll go ahead and apply that same sheet template from the server to this document. And now you can see that we have all of that same information already populated into this schematic as you can see here on screen. So first thing we should do, really basic, is just put a title up here using the text tool. And we're gonna call this 01 block diagram because that is the title for this sheet. And we'll go ahead and crank up the size on that text. And you can see here, we have a very nice title for our block diagram sheet. The next thing you can do is you can use these drawing tools here in the drawing menu to then create all of the different functional blocks for your block diagram. Now you'll notice here that if you draw out one of these rectangles, it looks a lot like the default color scheme that you would see on schematic symbols that you draw inside of a schematic library, for example, or that you draw using the symbol tool when you're creating a new component schematic symbol. Now you can see here that we also do have some color options in the properties panel. So for example, we can apply that blue color that you saw in Sohail Shabafru's sheets and we can change the border, for example. We can even have no border or a smallest border, if you like, that matches the color of our block that you see here. So not required, but you can basically set whatever border you want. Once you have this block, for example, you can just go ahead and add in text to the block. We're gonna call this one, just again, for example, power supply 3v3. So this is a 3.3 volt power supply block. And we can then of course also change some of the text properties here. We can make that text just a little bit bigger, center it here inside of this block. Maybe we wanna make it bold, whatever you can imagine. Next, if you want to include a power port in your block diagram, you can do that, but you shouldn't use the actual power port objects. What you should do is just draw out a power port as you can see I'm doing here. So for example, I'm just drawing out what would be a little 3.3 volt power port. I can then add some text to it. 
can see here, we'll just call this, let's say for example, 3.3 volts. And then we can apply all of the styling options that we saw earlier. So again, we can increase the size, we can make it bold, we can change the color. And then here, I would recommend you also change the color of these lines so that it's very clear that this is actually a power port. So for example, we can make these blue, we can make the line much thicker, and that basically matches the styling that we saw in the PDF schematics. Now, if you're going to use this styling for a power port, you should use the same styling if you then indicate another power port, but with a different voltage, or if you also indicate your ground connections. And I would advise indicate your grounding connections if you are doing a system that, for example, has galvanic isolation, so you basically have some different ground nets. You would then need to indicate how those ground nets are connected together in your block diagram. For example, if we had an isolated DC-DC converter, the, the best way and most common way to do it is to use a Y-type capacitor. You would wanna make sure you include that in the block diagram. Now, we can, of course, keep creating blocks just by copying this original block and pasting it and that would allow us to keep the same color scheme, and that's gonna make sure that everything looks nice and consistent here. For example, we could call this our MCU block, and then if we have two blocks, we can then draw connections between them, either using the lines, as we saw earlier, just by drawing out the lines with the line tool, or as you see here in the PDF schematics, you could actually use these rectangles to draw out connections for buses, for example, for this UART bus or this SPI bus. Now, the last thing I want to look at in these very professional schematics is the color scheme that is applied to these schematic symbols. How do you do this? Where do you do this? Well, this is actually not something that you would do in the schematic sheet. This actually originates inside of your component library. So the natural place to do this, of course, would be inside of a schematic lib file, for example, or if you're using the Altium Cloud platform, you can then access your managed component library on the cloud and you can do the edits there. So here, for example, we have, let's say this DG411 FDY switch. You see here that it has a schematic symbol, but it is in the default color scheme. What I can do is I can just select this rectangle for this symbol and you see here there is an option for the fill color. I can then change that fill color to that very nice blue color that you saw in those schematics or maybe a red color, whatever color I want. I can do all of that inside of a schematic library file or in the cloud in the component editing tools. Once you make that edit inside of your library file, you then wanna port those updates over to your schematic sheets and then those symbols that you updated will automatically update with the new color scheme and you can enforce that custom color scheme across all of your components if you want. Yeah.